So after you register your software, when you click on the catalyst, you won't get the screen, and the instrument defaults to the mapper section. Again, we have the mapper, the looper, the playback, and now you're going to see this default session. The default section session is where you set up the instrument for, for playing and recording. So the first thing that you have to do is hit the MIDI select. And what the MIDI select does, you have to tell the software what your MIDI input is. What are you plugging into the USB port? I'm just using my laptop now, so there's nothing there. Loop B1, internal MIDI, means it allows me to go from one app to the next inside the computer. For example, if I wanted to connect this software to contact, I would use Loop B1. If I normally have my interface, my interface shows here. Now, because I said that there are different apps, the Mapper, Looper, Performer, you have to say that when, I come, when the MIDI comes in here, where, and you want to use the Mapper, where do you want the MIDI to go to? So again, if you're using an external synth, you, are, um, you, would, have, you would see your interface here. If you're going to use a software synth, you would have internal MIDI. If you just want to hear the sounds that are built into the uh, your PC, you would see this. So you would set up your stuff like that. Real time means this is when you're actually playing and not actually recording it or having the um, catalyst plays the MIDI files. You want to hear what you're playing. So again, you can assign it to loop B1 if you're using a soft synth, or you would see the interface the same as here if you're using an outside source. Now you notice also that you see these words MC and PC. MC means MIDI clock, and you probably want that on because you want to synchronize all your, if any of your synthesizers have any kind of um, clock stuff to control loops or to control some effects, you want that to work that way. And PC is program change, which means that these the uh, stuff going to the, the MIDI files going through the mapper can send out program changes and it will be received coming from here or whether they're inside the, uh, the files themselves. Also, the next thing to set up that you want to have the MIDI through on if you are playing your instrument and you want your instrument to be heard while you're playing in real time, that's where this through is. And the clock is, should always be on. Now, there's lots of stuff here in the session parameters. But the main thing is this. The instrument can play multiple channels at once. So that means that if you're going to be playing multiple instruments at once, you may need to sign a bank change and a program number for each of the channels. So if you set this all up, when you, when you turn on the program, it automatically sends out, when you, whenever you have a session parameter, all of these bank and program changes on these channels. If you set up controller numbers, a controller number is controlling, the, let's say, a mod wheel or foot controller, panning. All this can be done here so that on this channel, for example, when you turn on the program, it will send out these note numbers and program changes and this value. If you're working in real time and you want to make a change to a synth, you don't have to go to the synth. I can just go here and hit send, and now it will send a program number of three on channel one because I hit that button. So that's how this works. This stuff has to do, which we'll get into later when we get into the mapper and whenever we want to use transposition and um, whether you want to turn those channels on or off. This next section here is also kind of important because it means that when you're playing through your external keyboard or controller, when, when, you, when you come in on any of these channels, it gets routed. So the mapper means that on channel 4, the notes C to B2 are going to represent these notes. So this is C, C sharp, 
D, D sharp, E, like that. So from C to B2, and you can assign basically any octave range. You can start from any point, but you notice that they always go up chromatically, chromatically, goes up sequentially from the first note up to the, um, the, the two octave range. The looper has functions, and that means that when I'm playing the looper, you, once, you, once you assign a channel to that looper, let's say channel 2, you can remotely, on channel 2, set note numbers so that you can, have, you can remotely start a loop and stop, play a loop and overdub and use all these functions all controlled through MIDI. So the default session saves all of these things, the mics, the performer, the looper, the channels, and what they're going to do. After you save all these, and also, once you, once you set your volume controls, these are volumes on all 16 channels, when you hit save, all of that is remembered so that the next time you turn it on, all the things that you changed in your session folder, all the things that you've done to your click track, all the things that you've done down here are saved and remembered.